two for one. Three opponents down. Your enemy can't kill if they... <laughs> Five minutes remaining. Two for one. Yes! Three down! Zone C lost. Your enemy has a power play. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to train with slug shotguns and Kovacs, as well as provide you a way to train in-game without it. Throughout this video, you will see that slug shotguns are not only insanely effective in PvP, but will also increase your accuracy with just about any precision weapon in the game. But before we get into that, I wanted to ask you guys for a really big favor. Please drop a like and comment down below if you enjoyed or learned something new from this video. It really helps out with the algorithm and allows me to possibly end up in the recommendation section of YouTube, therefore being able to reach and help more guardians. I also wanted to tell you guys that I am now affiliated with Amazon which allows me to give away a free 30 day trial of Amazon Prime to my subscribers. Amazon Prime gives you free ultra fast delivery, thousands of movies and TV shows. I personally am watching The Boys right now, I highly recommend it, shopping benefits and Twitch Prime which gives you free in game loot for Destiny 2. I want to be honest with you guys and let you know that I'll be compensated for this, however, you'll be supporting this channel and future content to come. You can find links for the free trial in the description down below. Regardless though, your viewership is enough for me and I am incredibly grateful for your time and truly hope you guys benefit from this video in some way, shape, or form. Don't forget that I'll be giving away two Model L mouses at 5,000 subscribers too, so be sure to smash that subscribe button to enter and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss a new video and a chance to win. Now, to be honest, slug shotguns are not weapons I regularly use, and up until last season, they were mostly kept in the vault, racking up some dust. However, that all changed one day in competitive when my entire team had been destroyed by just one titan and a chaperone. This sparked my curiosity, how powerful and lethal were these shotguns in PvP? So I went to my vault, pulled out a good bone structure, and went to work. I started to watch one of the most infamous slug shotgun mains, Destiny Fun Police, and studied his gameplay frame by frame. I know he's a controller main, however the techniques I observed him doing stand true whether you are on M and K or controller. The funny thing is, after applying these techniques throughout a 30 day period, I realized my accuracy had not only gotten better with slugs, but also with hand cannons, scouts, and snipers. This is because slug shotguns are highly reliant on centering before ADSing. In fact, I would go as far as to say that aiming for a prolonged period of time while ADSing will detriment your survivability. Not only will it increase your margin of error with variables such as self-doubt and overcorrection, but when you have shotguns and melee abilities in the game that can one-hit kill, spending the time to line up your shot isn't a luxury you have. This leads me to the technique I observed DFP utilizing, which I will call snap firing for intensive purposes. Snap firing is when a player performs 95% of their aiming before ADSing and immediately fires when in ADS with minor adjustments. Here's an example. As I said before, slug shotguns are heavily reliant on centering. The key to this archetype is to trust that your sights are already on the target before ADSing, which is essential because the punishment is just as high as the reward, aka death. You have to be confident that your reticle will land on the opponent so that you can fire immediately after aiming down sights. This trust or confidence is also known as muscle memory, which can be built through click timing and target acquisition exercises. Hence why improving this skill trait will directly increase your accuracy when it comes to other precision weapons. The beauty of this is that you can train snap firing inside Destiny 2, which is why I'm splitting up this routine into two categories for in-game training and Kovax training. However, before we dive into it, I wanted to go over a few aspects of movement that can directly aid in your accuracy when it comes to slug shotguns. If you are just starting out with slug shotguns, I recommend that you slow down and stop sprinting before engaging an opponent, so that you can get used to the time required to ADS, then fire, and to also understand where the center of the reticle will land when in ADS. Also, I've come to find that firing immediately after coming out of a sprint is less accurate than if you were to do it at regular speed. This is unless you have a perk that will help you with handling such as shotgun target acquisition mods, a dexterity mod, a sprint grip weapon mod, or exotics such as dragon shadow. Six times out of ten when firing immediately after a sprint, I've either missed or hit body shots, even when my reticle was over the head of the opponent. 
This is not verified by theorists that the game registers the ADS initial shot accuracy slower after sprinting than if you were to do it at regular walking speeds. In other words, if you quickly fire right after sprinting you will be utilizing hip fire accuracy rather than the initial shot accuracy you receive from aiming down sights. With that being said, sprinting is not all that bad. In fact, it is one of the best indicators showing where the reticle will land when going into ADS. This is because of the icon that pops up in the center of the screen while you are sprinting. So if you are unsure of where the reticle will end up, Use this as a reference point. Just make sure that when you come out of sprint, wait a half second or so so that the game registers you at ADS, thus giving you that initial shot accuracy rather than hip fire accuracy. Another variable that you have to consider is sliding and shooting, which is something I don't recommend players on PC do that are just starting out. The first reason is that it is very hard to pull off when you're not used to the weapon. The next reason is that sliding contradicts the purpose of the weapon being that you are not trying to close a gap, but instead you are trying to keep an 8 to 11 meter distance between you and your opponent so that you can safely hit that headshot beyond an aggressive frame's reach, thus allowing you to stay out of an aggressive frame shotgun's one hit kill range and also stay clear from anyone attempting to melee or shoulder charge you. Now I'm not saying to never slide and shoot, because there is a time and a place for that but try to gain more experience with the weapon before attempting to do so. Now that we have a better understanding of the weapon, let's start with the in-game training. When training in-game, you have to consider four things. Do the models have similar sizes and hitboxes? Will the damage given to the model have the same outcome as a live scenario? Is there a way to track progress? And lastly, is the instance repeatable? If those are all fulfilled, then you most likely have an effective way to train in game. Our goal is to create muscle memory for centering with a weapon that can one-shot kill. You are training yourself to track and keep the target in the center of the screen so that there is no time wasted while ADSing, or in other words, being as efficient as possible at snap firing. Now that we understand the criteria, let's start filling out our list. The first thing we need to do is find game models with similar sizes and hitboxes, which would be the Fallen. Out of every enemy type in Destiny 2, Dregs and Vandals are the closest in similarity when compared to Guardians. The question is, will we have the same outcome from the damage received? The answer is yes, because whether it be a Guardian or a Dreg, the outcome of a headshot will still be the same. Unless, of course, if you're dealing with a super. Next, we need a way to track kills, and that is through masterworking the particular weapon you're using. I know Chaperone is a preferred choice, however, it is not capable of being masterworked just yet. For example, Training with the masterwork first in, last out will not make too much of a difference being that it is in the same archetype as Chaperone. If the ADS seems sluggish compared to the Chaperone, you can add targeting adjuster mods, dexterity mods, or use exotics that increase the handling to fill the gaps. Lastly, we'll be using Lost Sectors as the repeatable instance. The locations I personally go to is the Widow's Walk on ADZ and the Empty Tank on the Tangled Shore because of the high volume of dregs and vandals. Now that we have our criteria fulfilled, let's get started with the in-game training routine. First, make sure the slug shotgun selected is masterworked so you can properly track the progression. If you still want to use the chaperone or use a weapon that is not masterworked, make sure again that you have an efficient way of tracking. Next, you will go to either one of the previously mentioned locations. Before heading in, try to find the closest public event on the planet and fill your slug shotgun to maximum capacity. You are more than welcome to apply scavenger or ammo finder mods to reduce the amount of ammo runs. Now that we are inside the Lost Sector, we will train two scenarios. The first scenario will be pure centering aka snap firing. Please fire your slug at regular running speed and do not sprint or slide into your shot. If you sprint or slide into your shot, it will take away from building a solid foundation of muscle memory when it comes to centering and ultimately slow your progress. Also, just like in my last video, we will be using a tracking method called model aiming which is to track a huge portion of the model, aka Guardian and engagements, rather than focusing strictly on the head or reticle. You do not need to worry about the boss, just clear the beginning portion of the Lost Sector because this is where the majority of the dregs and vandals will appear. Once you have it cleared, run out of the Lost Sector and reset the instance. This will be just like the last scenario, but instead of maining your slug shotgun, you will be equipped with a primary and then switch to your slug shotgun when engaging the enemy. This will aid in fast cleanups as well as take down supers that are charging at you, so that you are able to do a chunk of damage, then quickly switch to your slug shotgun when the opponent is close enough. Each scenario will consist of 50 kills, totaling 100 kills per day, and if you want extra credit, add 100 kills per scenario, totaling 200 kills per day. I guarantee you, by the time you hit 2000 kills, snap firing in PvP should be something that is second nature to you. Now that we have completed the in-game portion, let's move on to Kovacs. 
Before starting these exercises, I want you guys to keep some things in mind, which is to make sure your reticle is centered before snap firing and apply model tracking to all these exercises. There will be a crit multiplier on three out of the five exercises so that tracking the upper half or the head of the model should be the priority. Most of the exercises in this routine are highly focused on click timing and target acquisition, being that it is the core foundation of snap firing. Each exercise will last five minutes, totaling 25 minutes, and should be done in the same order presented in the video. If you want extra credit, double up on the time for each exercise, totaling 50 minutes. This routine should be done daily or at least five times a week, lasting a four week period. Now, let's get started. One wall, 9,000 targets is a classic. This exercise is pure click timing and tracking. It helps you build a fast and accurate shot rhythm that enhances the use of single shot or burst type weapons such as snipers, hand cannons, scout rifles, or slug shotguns. When doing this exercise, try your best not to reposition your mouse for the entirety of the five minutes. This trains you to be subconsciously aware of the mouse pad space and how it can be efficiently used. Do not do this absurdly fast. Find a good consistent rhythm that helps you find a balance between speed, smoothness, and accuracy. One wall, six targets small is a click timing exercise. This is meant to train your precision and target acquisition when it comes to hitting headshots. It will decrease your chances of firing before or after the reticle hits the target. However, the key to this exercise is to not only hit the targets, but to also efficiently get to the next target. Your path should be a straight line to the next target without any distraction. This should be done slowly for the first three to four days before speeding up. The D2 Slug Shotgun ADS Close Range Target Acquisition Exercise is meant to help you center close range moving targets vertically and horizontally. Make sure to utilize snap firing on each target and do not remain in ADS to take down multiple targets. Remember, we are working on centering and snap firing rather than killing targets in ADS. Also, do not spam your weapon, it will result in recoil and inaccuracy. The D2 Slug Shotgun 7 Target Pressure Aiming Exercise will simulate an aggressive opponent that is charging at you. This will help reduce your reaction time and build muscle memory, so that when you enter an engagement with an opponent that is charging at you with an aggressive frame, you can instinctually react rather than having to think about it. Snap fire when the target is in mid to close range for that we are simulating a slug shotgun and not a sniper. Here's an example of the range I am referring to. Unfortunately, I have not been able to implement fall off damage, so I made sure that the gun itself is less accurate at a farther range and when spamming. Finally, we have the D2 Slug Shotgun Live Training that simulates movements in PvP with targets that are jumping and strafing at erratic speeds. Again, snap firing should be applied with each target, you should never be in ADS for more than a second, and you have the ability to triple jump in this exercise to enable you to get closer to targets faster. Again, do not spam or shoot from far ranges, this will result in less accuracy. Just like in my last video, I want to say that this is not the end-all be-all that will make you a god in the crucible. You can have the best aim ever, but someone with great map knowledge, situational awareness, and better movement will still mind-bend you over in a match. So playing the actual game is also needed to improve, just don't solely rely on Kovacs. That is all I have for you guys today, I truly hope this helps at least a few guardians looking to improve their slug shotgun aim or centering in general. Also, if you guys want to know what sensitivity I'm using for Kovacs and the gear I'm using to edit, I'll have it listed in the description below. If you want to see more videos like this where I go in depth into Kovacs and in-game training specifically for click timing or tracking on D2, please turn on your notification button and subscribe. Thank you again for watching, peace.